Uh, what are the big? What is the biggest challenge that you have faced operationally with the coronavirus? Thank you for having me. I guess one of the biggest challenges that we have faced as a group of personally was essentially to make sure that you know the bank continued to serve its customer and clients, you know, in a seamless way. And uh, I am happy to confirm that this has more or less been the case. And um, and and we have been able to to serve our clients, you know, throughout this pandemic, and even you know reduce the cost of the of offering that service to a certain extent. Now, obviously, with this kind of shock, you know, comes the notion of drawing liquidity challenge, and also you know the, the the vulnerability of the balance sheet. This is something that we assess, you know, on an ongoing basis, and um, and we believe that you know somehow this crisis will eventually be transitory and eventually that will find some medicine or a vaccine down the road, which will allow us, you know, to basically go through this, this, this low cycle. Uh, what will happen by and large, you know, within this crisis, we, the world has faced a simultaneous shock within from the demand and, and, and supply side, and which have actually brought those economies to a virtual standstill. And to back it up, government have had to expand, you know, fiscally and uh, in a different way uh, across yeah. the board. Uh, this has also been the case in, in Africa to some extent with the bilaterals providing some helps and also some deferred payment on loans. And uh, we believe that fiscal expansion has gone a long way to help those countries for the very first time applying a counter-cyclical policy whereby central banks have actually been able to cut rates, provide additional liquidity, and uh, this is one of the very first, you know, situation where we see certain banks in countries like this one expanding, yes. you know, at time shocks. So now the question is, where do we go from here, you okay. know, uh, uh, after the pandemic? And, uh, and really, do yes, we have and, so, to... and so you point out there some of the positives and some of the things that central banks have done to support the economies in Africa, but, but that still leaves you, no doubt, with a headache in terms of loans going bad, loans needing restructuring. What percentage of loans at Ecobank do you think will need to be restructured in 2020? No, it's, it's actually too early to assess that. And I think you also have to understand that within this kind of environment, it makes perfect sense to to actually allow banks to give it a bit more time to see what will actually become, you know, a structural impairment within their balance sheet, you know, post, you know, after we actually have a true measure about the economic impact, you know, of this crisis. And the way we view it essentially is a twofold, right? We are in a situation whereby we didn't, we are still taking advantage of, you know, the fiscal expansion that has been provided to some of those countries and discussing with governments, you know, how the best trickle down they could actually offer within the real economy. And I believe, and we believe, you know, at the Ecobank that, you know, this crisis will eventually be transitory, which means that some of those companies who are facing challenge will eventually recover. Now, that's one of our long-term view, but we also hope that this is actually going to be materializing very soon, which means that, you know, between now and the end of the year, probably additional fiscal, you know, measure will be lead to actually support those economies. And surely, central banks have actually offered some room of brief, you know, to those banks in a form of, you know, uh, in, in, a, in a form of forbearance, which allowed banks to actually take some time to consider, you know, how structurally impact their balance sheet will be. And that's the process we are going through. And by the way, we view this kind of shock situation as an opportunity to basically challenge our capital in a most efficient way by sizing opportunities that are being left by, you know, the constraint that some of the financial actors are having mm. just because of the nature of the crisis. And we believe that, you know, going working very closely to some of our customers, we can actually have the best risk adjusted reward, you know, in terms of expanding our capital and helping those companies that we believe will go through this cycle. OK, and so, Alan, you point out point to a lot of reasons to be hopeful there. And, and banks in Europe and the US are keen to cast themselves as part of the solution rather than the problem when it comes to getting through coronavirus. Maybe that's true of Africa as well, but maybe African banks will have to face some distress. Do you expect the banking sector to be somewhat distressed? Listen, again... Everything could happen, right? You know, it depends on how long this crisis will last eventually. And uh, and obviously, if, you know, within two years' time, you know, we still haven't found any meaningful product, 
it's pretty clear that growth, global growth, will actually probably linger, you know, after this, this strong rebound that we are facing. In which case, yes, you should expect, you know, some damage, some permanent damage within the within some some you know, the balance sheet of some banks. Essentially also because, you know, by and large, Africa is commodity driven and which which in this kind of con uh, situation would be a less demand. So we have to make the contingency plan, you know, to have to face a situation where, it, yes, we we could face, you know, some challenge within the balance sheet. But like I said, this is not our base assumption. Now, even having said that, you see, but we also understand that macro policy has been relatively helpful. But even in a situation like this one, they will need to actually still even more expand, expand more expansion in order to actually cushion the impact of this crisis. So a lot of things still need to be done. But as a bank, we are still, you know, in the wait and situation with the view that this is actually going to be a transitory phenomenon.